this is the hashtag. Um, I'm at Geeky Marketer um, on Twitter and my website, geekymarketer.com. Um, so I put this picture up here because I'm hoping that you learn out of this how not to get burned. Um, and a big reason for this is because, you know, there are trolls out there now. And I call them that because they sit in rooms and they look for people that have stolen images. They report that then to an attorney. The attorney contacts the copyright owner and then they together send out a letter to that person and say not only is this a cease and desist, but we would like some money. So who owns the copyright? We'll get into, by the way, I, I talk about this because I got sent a nasty letter like that. Um, it's ever whoever creates it, whoever takes the picture, whoever creates the image that you're using owns the copyright. Can you use it? We'll look at some opportunities where you can. Um, this is a lot of jargon. This is all, by the way, on my geekymarketer.com website as well. Um, so I tell people you should know how to defend yourself. Um, and here's the reason why. $100,000 was yeah, correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so my friend calls me and he's panicking. He got an e or he got a letter. It's a cease and desist letter. And it says, and oh by the way, if you did this intentionally, you write us a check for a hundred thousand dollars. Now he thought that he was using it properly. It's a website that doesn't make money. But because the website is owned by a company that makes money, they were perfectly within their rights to send the letter. Um, he's like, oh my god, I might have to get a new resume and I don't think I'm going to have a job any longer and all these kinds of things. Um, myself, years ago, I got a $10,000 bill in a cease and desist letter from a website I had gotten rid of years ago. But my name was still in the code. And guess what? As Kimberly catch Dorian, there's only like two of us in the whole USA. The other one lives in San Diego. It's pretty easy to figure out who to send the bill to. What I had to do was to prove that I didn't have anything to do with that website any longer. So word of warning, take your name out of any pieces when you transfer them over if it's in the code. And it had transferred to a company in India which had then stolen some images from a sister site of Getty Images. Getty Images is like, um, they're bigger than you can imagine. They're like the mob of, of uh, photos in the sense that they have attorneys, they have people just looking to see who's violated. So don't do it. And the company there had not only stolen some images, but they had used them past the date that they could use them. So we'll talk about that in a few minutes, too. So one of the things I do is I keep every single email, but it took me about three months to get that one fixed. Um, my friend with the $100,000 bill, they did not pay $100,000, but they paid close to $4,000, and he had to make most of his writers go to half time until the bill was paid back to the parent company. So little things that I do now is I keep a file folder of every single company I do business with. And we'll look a little bit at Pixel a later. Um, I take a copy of the license at the time that I purchased something. Um, I keep a PDF of everything that was in that. So I just purchased the futuristic design bundle. Came with a bunch of images, came with a bunch of fonts. I take a PDF of that, it looks really, really ugly, but I keep it so I know everything that was in it. I keep a copy of the license in there, so those two go into the licenses folder. Then under that, I keep pixel out fonts, pixel out illustrator files, pixel out other files. Because sometimes, like this one has some files for um, just Mac users, 
And you know, if I ever have a Mac in the future, I still want to keep access to it, right? Um, I also do this with like Unsplash. We'll talk about them in a moment. Um, again, I keep a PDF of the license and, and the images of a separate file. So if anyone says, hey, you know, you shouldn't be using that, that's my image, that's my copyright, I can say, I downloaded it from Unsplash and it said that I could use it. We're going to talk here in a few minutes about all these kind of like crazy rules and stuff. So let's talk about those images. So something like this, I think this one I downloaded from Unsplash. It's gorgeous, right? And I don't mind using it for presentations. I do teach at a community college, and I do use those types of things in my presentations. Would I ever use this commercially? No. Even though Unsplash says I can, I can guarantee you somebody paid to have this put on a wall. This is not your typical graffiti. Graffiti is pretty much a public domain. You know, very few graffiti artists are going to want to hey, that's mine. But somebody paid for that. So that's somebody's art. I would never put that on a billboard. I would never use it commercially, even though I'm splashed as I can. Because you can't have two copyright owners here. You have a guy that designed it, or woman, and you have a photographer that took the picture. So you got a lot of great fuzzy here, right? So types of image. So we just start at the simplest and one of the complex. So your own images, let's say you paint this kind of stuff and, and you use it. You scan it, you get rid of the background, you now have this beautiful transparent background. You want to use it on your website. Great, it's your image, you can do whatever you want. Um, what I do suggest is that you downsize the image to at least 72 dpi. If you're not sure what that is, if you go to my website, there's an excellent article about the difference between 72 dpi and 300 dpi, which means dots per inch. 72 looks great on the web. 300 looks great on the web too, but then you're using up a lot of space and, and stuff, and it takes a lot more to download. Um, I did mention that if it's comes to customer's property, make sure in your contract you have something in there about okay to use pictures from their property. Like if you're a landscaper, the before and the after. The reason I say it should be in your contract is if it's not, they can defense that and say, take it off. I don't, I never agreed to let you use my property on your website. So if it's in your contract, they can always scratch it out, right, if they actually read it. Um, but make sure it's in there. Um, also, if you're using your own images, you can always watermark it. If you've ever gone to like, a website and there's this kind of faint ghosty thing across it, that's a watermark. It makes it really difficult for somebody to steal it off your site. Next one, public domain. If you're not sure what this says, it basically means that you can use this. It's out in the public. And a lot of them are really old images. Like this is an image of a teenage child. Uh, actually, she's probably just a child of a child that was working in the textile mills um, years ago. But there's also a lot of beautiful, very depth type of photos out there in the public domain. So what I usually do is when I look at a public domain image, I'm looking for something maybe on a .edu site, .gov site. I want it to be something official. I don't want it to be, you know, like Pamela's site.com. Well, how do I know Pamela's okay with public domain images, right? Um, you can use them for pretty much anything, which is great. A lot of the really old ones are not that high in um, resolution, but many of the new ones like this are. So a lot of people really think public domain means old. It does not. Creative Commons. I'm not going to go through each of these. Creative Commons is kind of a cool thing that's been around, I think, yeah, maybe seven, eight years now. And it applies to fonts. It applies to images. It applies to some software. And basically it means I kind of designed it for other people to kind of use and um, change the code a little, enhance the code, etc. And all Creative Commons things have some type of license. 
No, but actually have two pages here. And they go from the easiest to remember down to a lot harder. But like creative commons zero means there's no copyright. And you know, again, going back to that picture I said, kind of two people on the copyright, really, um, it's on splash and it says it's CC zero. But the person who took the picture, you know, basically is copyright and says they don't mind releasing it. The person who designed it, painted it, they may have a claim. And so they keep getting more and more complicated. Some of them allow you to remix it or do a derivative of it. I'll show you a derivative in a moment. Um, and the derivatives are kind of fun. I actually, when I do derivatives, I'll take the original image and I might mess it up so, so goofy looking in Photoshop or something. You'd never know it was a derivative, but I still give credit. Because I always think it's nice to give people credit. And sometimes they'll find you by giving credit and they'll say, thanks, I would have never thought it was my picture. Or thanks, I didn't even think about doing that to it. So, um, But Creative Commons is a great way to get some images to use. Um, and they'll let you know whether you can use them commercially or not. And this, like I said, goes down all the way to this one is um, Creative Commons. You can actually use the image, but you can't make derivatives. You can't claim anything. You can't change it, nothing. But you can use it kind of like Facebook. I think of Facebook that way. I can share it, etc. but I'm not changing it, right? Fair use. This is where my friend had a good trouble. The $100,000 one. <laughs> um, and I call it the giant gray elephant in the room. If you read that description, I, I, you know, what is fair use? And I tried to make that as simple as possible, you know? And that's where he got into trouble. And he went through the law school. So <laughs> he thought he had fair use. The attorney saw it differently, and so did the copyright owner. Um, so, and we don't have a lot of uh, legal uh, cases yet behind this kind of stuff. So until we have that as precedent, it's a tough situation out there. And the other one is editorial. Again, a fairly new kind of use. Um, usually means that it's going into like you know, New York Times or something like that. It often has things like uh, stars or the president, things like that. But then you usually pay for those. You're not usually going to get those for free. Uh, and uh, they cost a little chunk of change, especially if it is the president, if it is a star, etc. Um, and they're usually marked for editorial use only. So if your website's selling stuff too, you're in the right fuzzy area. Are you a commercial site then? Tapes of images, royalty free. This is like, woo woo, I found royalty free. It means you can kind of use it forever. You can use it over and over again once you purchase it. And, um, you know, it's yours to play with, right? Whereas rights managed, which is where the company that, or the web page that I used to work at, ran into trouble. They had some stuff that Getty Images owned that they had hit their two-year mark on, as well as a few stolen ones. Um, and once you hit that like two-year one mark, one day mark, you get a bill. If you plan to re keep continue using this, <laughs> you must pay. Um, some rights managed also say that you can only use it once, and you're done. If you want to use it again, you got to buy a license. The big thing with the places like Unsplash, um, Pexels, Pixabay, etc., they you can download these wonderful, beautiful images, right? And they're 300 DPI, and they're actually good enough that you can like put them on a billboard. Um, oh, sorry. There we go. Uh, slow um, but they don't have model releases. So places like I stock photo and stuff, usually it'll show that there's a model release. You want a model release um, because 
This woman is beautiful. It's a 300 GPI piece. It came from Unsplash. Um, but what if she's driving down the road and she sees her picture up on a billboard? I didn't give them permission. I didn't give the guy who took my picture permission for that. With no model release. So be very, very careful. Schools slow. There we go. Property release. So it's a little hard to see this. But there's like a, a barn here and stuff. My husband's an architect. It really annoys him when somebody takes pictures of buildings and doesn't give him credit. He owns the copyright. Not the builder, not the owner of the building. He does. Just at least give him credit, you know. Building by George Kentorian. Property releases can start to be a big thing. They are kind of coming up now. So, again, you need to be a little careful. Sometimes when I take a picture, of a, there's a there's a sunflower farm out on Michigan Avenue, and there's a really cool farm behind it, and I love to take pictures of the sunflowers. So what I do is I isolate them out, and I go in in the background to the farm and stuff like that. Wait, but not clean, but so it's not distinguishable from any other you know place going down Michigan Avenue. Um, a lot of times, too, when you buy images online, there's a lot of caveats to using them. You can't use them like on a porn site, um, anything that denigrates another human being, those kinds of things. Um, and why? Because maybe the model never thought about that when they got paid $100 to model you know, out here and sit down and take pretty pictures. And they never thought that, oh my god, my face could end up on one of those sites, right? So be careful, look at releases. Um, again, for a presentation, something I'm not doing commercially, I don't worry about that so much like what I'm doing now. I worry a lot more about it if I'm doing it and it's going to be out in the wild. You know, I uploaded this to um, you know something on LinkedIn and we have a link to this. I probably would change the models in here, etc. So like I said, you know, 300 dpi, I can see the pores on your face when I get up close. 72 dpi, it would, it would just be nice smooth skin. So here's, I don't know how many of you have been around for a long time, but this woman was a model on a website um, years ago, and her face ended up like everywhere. I, I guess everybody thought she was like, you know, exactly what they wanted. And um, this by right now too, we'll talk about this in a moment, this uh, image is now owned by Getty Images, but I still have my old receipt that shows that I could use it over and over again. Um, but what I did was I ran it through like a reverse image type thing. So images.google.com, you can upload a photo and see how many places that app or photos that are similar to it. Here's the funny thing. This is how often this woman got used and probably never got compensated enough for it. Um, so even if I go all the way out to like, I think it was 20, Whoa. she keeps showing up. Yeah. Yeah, so if like any of your friends ever say, hey, can you model for me? I'm, I'm selling my images on the web now. Um, and, and you can see it's all these different languages and stuff like that. So I'm sure she had no idea when she said yes, um, what that actually meant. Um, and uh, yeah, she ended up on flyers, you name it. It was kind of funny how many places her face ended up on. So this is a derivative um, type of thing. So uh, you could download this pretty little white cat. And one of the things you could do is you could change the eyes to green. You could change them to purple, right? And tell people, look, look at this cool cat I got. Yeah, no. But it's a derivative. It's still the same picture. 
I can also go in Photoshop and swirl it and make it look really weird, and nobody would know it was this original picture, but it's still a job of it. should still give credit. Let's talk about fonts for a moment. Um, I am a font addict. I am Kim, I am a font addict. Um, I have about 5,000 of them. <laughs> Don't ever install 5,000 on your computers because um, they will hate you. Um, but there's a lot of things that you should know about fonts. Um, so there's all kinds of different types of licensing. Read it. Um, never just assume you can use it commercially. Because whoever owns that font, whoever created that font, sometimes people redistribute it illegally. Hey, here's a free Disney font. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, you have permission if you're not sure. Like I send an email and I keep that in a summer folder. Yes, I give you permission to use this. Could you just please put a thank you on your website for me? Absolutely. Um, and uh, if you don't get permission, then don't do it. Even if like the person's dead or whatever, just don't, right? And never use a font like Disney. Yes, I realize you can go off the Disney font, you can get the Coca-Cola font. Um, do they have big attorneys? Mm -hmm. Really big attorneys. Um, I, I, I just wouldn't. And it, it's really stupid. So I put a link in here, but I'm not going to go to it. I can just tell you the story. Um, do any of you live in Dexter, Michigan? Chelsea? Hamburger? Okay. If you did, you know this story. So there was a woman that worked for the Dexter Chamber of Commerce. Very nice lady. Um, she had worked for Disney at one point in time, uh, and now she was like the director. It's a small place, so you know nothing fancy. Well, she started doing this blog and a website and a Twitter feed called Doing Dexter. Now my mom's an older woman, and she goes, "Honey, I, I, I know I, I'm a little backwards on some of these things, but she." Goes, it just sounds kind of sexual. I thought, yeah. <laughs> You're not the first to thought that. Yeah. Um, and then on top of it, she used a Disney font on the website. Mm -hmm. And every picture was her, like, you know, sexually kind of leaning back on the counter at the Ace Hardware and all the men going, uh. mm -hmm. And then in the Twitter feed, she starts talking about um, the fact that. She was out at one of the restaurants with the bars there, and she's getting drunk. So one other little tiny newspaper kind of picked up on this. She got fired, and so did the president of the chamber. And it really, really kind of like put this negative aspect on the Dexter chamber. Where people like me sent a resume and said, I would, I would do this job better. Um, but the fact that she used a Disney font was a big deal, and I still don't know why Disney ever came after that. Um, so don't do it. Um, always buy a commercial license if it's something you think you're going to use in the future. Um, I just do because usually it's fairly cheap. If it's really expensive, I have to really, really want the font. Um, but uh, it's just good to keep it, and I keep it in a summer folder. Personal use, I don't have too many laws anymore. And commercial use. This is a guy on DeviantArt, uh, a great place to buy some fonts and stuff. He has a great font, it's called Telegraphico. These are his rules. You can use it free for personal use. Please give credit. Something like font was used or used is by Telegraphico by Font God and a link to his page. Okay, do it. Yeah, give him a little. Commercially, if you're going to earn money for a project involving this fund, I would consider it correct to make a donation. And a lot of times they're like, you know, hey, give them 20 bucks. Woohoo! Yeah, buy them a cup of coffee. Woohoo! Um, and then I put in here, or if this project is to be used for a for profit venture, you should always uh, donate some money. 
Um, but I just thought it was a bright, fun, and kind of story image, so I went ahead and posted it here to give you an idea of what some of the people do and other places where you can find them. Uh, again, really cool Waller. I can use it here, and we can use it on a billboard. Um, so I always read an end user licensing agreement, no matter what, whether it's images or fonts. Understand what it says. If it's too complicated, have a friend that went to law school read it for you. Um, a lot of them are desktop and print licensing plans. Um, I used to work at a printer. We used to always ask, you know, if they had fancy fonts that weren't Google fonts or or web fonts that were normal. You know, do you have a license for this? So we didn't get the trouble. Um, web fonts usually display correctly. Um, but if you buy a weird little font and you embed it into your uh, 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 CSS, make sure that it displays correctly, because if it doesn't show the cool looking font, it should at least display like with the normal font, held out or whatever, so that people can still read it and it doesn't look like it's a foreign language. Um, Open licensing is very much like Creative Commons. I just always kind of double check and make sure it's on a legit site. And then commercial is, you know, basically using it for anything money-wise. Any questions? Yes? So we work for um, my company, we work with the agency, and um, for me to get like an illustrator and design, she'll, she'll do the package, right? So the package is the font. Mm -hmm. So, Let's say there was an issue that they're missing on our on our on a flyer. Um, who would be responsible for that? Would it be me or would it be the designer that picked the font? Um, it usually would come back to the company that you work for, and then they might put you two in a room <laughs> and say, you know, how did this go down? Where'd you get that font? Um, you're kind of getting that second hand, so you don't know whether it's been purchased or not. Okay. On my website, like I put a link to Google Fonts, which they have a huge, just like, I think it's 780 fonts to pick from, and they have, they're all visual on there, which is great. So you can see if they're thin, or if they're sans serif, or what they're sans um, But yeah, it's, it might be a good idea to just you know, double check with the designer, make sure that you know everything's good. The one thing you usually can't do is if you purchase it, um, you can't usually hand it off to the client. You can hand off the images or whatever, or you can embed it, but you usually can't um, say, "Here's the font." Okay. But look at the user agreement as well. Okay. Yes, sir. And uh, when you install WordPress, uh, the themes that you that you get. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a lot of images in there on, on the WordPress, right? You, you, are they are they open open license? You can pretty much use them without. Yeah, that. to the best of my knowledge, those are all open source, open to use. But also, be careful you do differentiate between the themes that come with WordPress mm -hmm. and then a theme that maybe you go and you find in the marketplace and download. Exactly. That is a whole other story. But yeah. Okay. So, so say for instance, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's right, but let's say I go. Uh, do, uh, yeah. Okay. Or another. Uh, there's quite a few, right? Mm -hmm. But if I buy them, right, or, or get the free one, and they have they have fonts and all that stuff, I still have to check to see if those are can be utilized like we have to get licenses. I'm all for covering my butt. <laughs> I mean, where do you go to find that out? Um, I just usually Google the font name. Just put the font name. Yeah. yeah okay. So like, you know, uh, you know, Kimberly's font dot OTF or whatever. Um, and that's and, another word yeah. I would like if you're getting a theme force theme, you would want to read through the, the, the file that theme force gives you on their license mm -hmm. to say if they say anywhere in there. You know, the photos that we include in this theme are open, you know, you can use it or not. You may actually specifically call it out and say, you know, the images we include with our theme are for demo purposes only. And so you're not actually allowed to use them. So yeah. you're going to have to really get into the weeds a little bit with some of that stuff. Yeah. Why they think it's available to you if you're developing your site, you got to go back and you got to check the theme whether the fonts are good and whether yeah. they're good. Well, that's the so, one thing that I can say with themes yeah. um, is that. You know, they're just kind of giving you the example, and you really should kind of replace them. 
But yeah, I feel comfortable anything I get from WordPress. You think so, WordPress? Yeah, everything else. Yeah. And and again, they might give you an image that's out on like Unsplash, which has, um, you know, it says it's free to use, even for commercial, but there's no model really. So. Even the bigger ones like Elementor and all those they basically set the tech of stuff. I. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, no. I always do. Okay. Just because, let me tell you, when you get a ten thousand dollar bill or a hundred thousand dollar bill in the mail, especially if it comes on a Friday, you don't sleep very well over the weekend. No, <laughs> you don't. No. Um, and and um, yeah. The interesting thing with my bill was that it was for a trekking site in Nepal. And when I was doing it, the guy who was the trekker used to send me these just stunning pictures of like yaks up in the mountains and stuff, right? He was a beautiful photographer. So why they found the need to go out and get some other images that really weren't as good, I have no idea. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I even track my images, um, you know, if I make something. I put code into the background, and then if I find that somebody's using it, I'll say, you know, could you at least give me credit, or, you know, you're using this for a for-profit business, and cease and desist. And, and if they don't, then I write, again, their ISP provider, and say, this is on this web page, please have them cease and desist. Okay. And sometimes you only know by looking sometimes at the logs on your website as well. Um, so in Ann Arbor, there's a web design company called Enlighten, and they had this beautiful website. It was so beautiful that this company in China not only copied all the code, but left all the direct links to Enlighten's website. So Enlighten's like, why are all our images getting higher hits than our pages? Yeah, well, and then they found it. Yeah. You know, it's like. It's not bad, right? To get all those hits? It, pardon? It wasn't all that bad to get all those hits. So. No, because it wasn't coming to their website. Oh, it's right. one of the Chinese websites. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so that's how they found out was it, it didn't have a match match. Okay. Yes. Um, you mentioned that models obviously kind of had a different thing with them. Uh, what about pets? Is there any rights to animals and how they use them? Did that somebody come back and say that's my pet? I have rights to this. Yeah, it's it's getting tougher because believe it or not, like um, uh, what is that? Sour cat. Uh, Grumpy cat. Grumpy cat. Grumpy cat has an agent, and because of Grumpy cat. Any, anything that's out there, like on Instagram and stuff now, they if they have like a million followers or something, they have an agent. <laughs> and and they make money. So like the memes that go around on Facebook, probably not that big of a deal. But if you start plastering them on your website or using them for your business, yeah, be careful. Okay. Um, uh, but just know. general, like, un-celebrity animals? Yeah, I would still get a sign off, um, if you could. I, you know, something like Unsplash or something? Um, maybe know. a better way to ask, uh, sometimes what I'm doing right now is, and maybe this is wrong, but mm -hmm. if you go to Google, you can do a search by the right usage rights. Uh, yes. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Maybe you can comment on that and how to find out more information. What you find yeah. that you like, how can I? I, I just out? go to the website, you know, and and look at it. So, like, if it's on Wikipedia, you can use it. Um, if really? yeah, yeah well, they found that that's kind of fair use. Um, but um, the content on Wikipedia, they images, yeah. Images. What about the? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's it's open resource. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's a kind of, we live in a strange world. I mean, I could talk about this next month and it may have changed. There may have been new laws, there may have been new lawsuits. And you know, our laws are, and rights are based upon our litigious society. And if there's two or three lawsuits that start favoring one side, then you got to rethink all that. That's tough. You, you got to kind of. I put myself out there all the time, you know, it's like, okay, I'll reverse image search things and make sure they're legit. 
Oh, I was going to show you one thing too. So the reason I use Pixel a lot. Um, so here is um, this is ThinkStack. This is a Getty Images site, and uh, you know, good luck. Here's all of the licensing rules, I and mean, I can keep scrolling. Um, and uh, the reason I like the Pixel though is that if I buy a pack. Here's pretty much the licensing. <laughs> it, it's pretty simple, you know. You can use it for everything. So um, I, I do buy packs from them, um, and they they sell these like bundles. And no, I didn't put a link like an affiliate link or anything. But the bundles are always short time. So this ends in so, so let's see. Six days, 18 hours, eight, or, yeah, 18 hours, 18 minutes. And so like this is the design panoply bundle. And it takes, this is what I say about PDF up plus the license. Um, so I know everything I got. You can see I'm scrolling, but virus is still way up there. Um, if it expires in six, you can't buy it anymore. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Well, and once so, you buy it, so you got it. Yeah, okay. so all these fonts, like I said, I'm a fontaholic. I will admit it. Um, and, uh, you know, for me, if there's like five fonts in here that I want, that's good enough for me because it's like $29 usually. And then they show examples and how some of them used it and stuff. But they also usually pay out, and I'll scroll down a little bit further. Things like this, these are like watercolor brushes and things like that. So, yeah, I love to buy their packages. But they have a whole bunch of those kind of bundles? Yeah, they go about every 20 days okay. or so. And it's pixelo.net. And yeah, the whole deal is $29. I can actually buy a prime for $29. So. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I like things that keep it simple that I'm not going to have to run in front of my attorney on a regular basis. Um, but you also got to think about this. So this is something I put on my website that I didn't talk about here. And that is, what happens if Get Images suddenly buys Pixel Do the rules change? Are they retroactive? Or does, does Get Images send you an email that says these are new terms of service? So this is all like, it's like the wild, wild west out there. So you would be right about that. Yeah, I would think it would be. Um, Getty Images is not always a friendly company. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Um, because they're big and they're bad. Um, but it's always interesting to me to see the kinds of trouble that people can get into. Um, and so I always just kind of say, cover your butt. Keep copies of the license. But when I download something from Unsplash, I actually make a PDF of it, and I love it because it's got the picture right there on the PDF, and then it says commercial use allowed. Because what do I do? I sell them on mugs. But I don't put people. I put, you were talking about animals, lions, things like that. But they're giant images, so you have to assume that probably the person that says it's okay to use actually owns it. Because you don't usually get these huge image sizes without it being somebody's image. Like when I take my Canon out, you know, it's a 15 megapixel camera, and I know that's a little right now, but you know, when I take a picture, I mean, it's good enough, it could go on a billboard. And I'm not saying like it's pretty enough, but it's got enough pixels and enough color definition <laughs> and stuff to actually show up there and not be ugly. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just, you know, just try to always kind of cover your butt as much as you can. Use your own. I'll get you first. I just have a question. Um, um, as a photographer, if I use Lightroom and then Lightroom when you go into the metadata, they ask you if you want to check the copyright. Well, does that work if, let's say, my photo is somewhere or someone's using it without the proper credit um, and I decide to take it off, you know, to court? Would I have to show, is that kind of like an evidence like, hey, this is my photo because I have a copyright? I just don't. Yeah, usually you can ask for a cease and desist. So first, look at how they're using it. 
if they're using an outside that might denigrate you know, certain people or something, even if it's a picture of a tree, don't care, um, you go to them strictly right to their ISP on that. Uh, you know, say this is the page, cease and desist, I am a copyright. Then if they don't, then I would talk to an attorney. But usually the ISPs are pretty good about getting rid of that kind okay. of stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, I always suggest you know putting in the metadata, and and I always assign them like a certain number too, so it's sometimes easier for me to find out there as well. Also, on that note, um, people often get copyright and trademark kind of confused. Yes. Copyright. As soon as you create something, you have copyright. Yep. You don't have to assert that, in, or, or you don't have to do anything to get the copyright of it. If you create something, the copyright is. Yeah. Trademark is a whole other story where you're saying like this is my logo and then in order to trademark that and, and have protections around that you have to show like first usage, you have to have that publicly somewhere, there's all these requirements that, that then you apply and get a trademark for. But that's way different than copyright. Right. Copyright covers all creative the work, the second you make it, you have copyright over it, and then you can go out and protect that. Okay. Yes. Sometimes finding that is not always easy, but like I said, that kind of reverse. So if you do images.google.com, there's like a little camera there. You click on the camera, and you can uh, click upload from a file, and you upload the image like I showed that woman. Yeah. And um, and then you can, it'll find things that look similar. So when Getty took over Stock Exchange, they did not um, keep that in their repertoire of images, probably because it was used so much. But the idea that I can go endlessly out on pages that have that woman on there, I just like it. it she wasn't compensated enough because I think there were uh, there was a set of like five or six images of her and just got massively used. You know, nice looking woman. We were going to use her on our website until we realized you know, how the other people were using her as well. So that's the initial conclusion uh, of some work on your um, I usually put it in like a caption or something, or um, you know, as a thank you at the bottom or something like that. Um, when I do LinkedIn articles and stuff, sometimes I put it right in the LinkedIn article. It just you know it depends. Sometimes what I'm going to move for. And I think we have one more question. Uh, don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm here for the day. You can catch up with me. Sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much.